All right, this is SSL Family Dad, and today I'm going to talk all about grow lighting. Okay, so over the past year I've experimented with a lot of different types of lighting and kind of found out what's, what's worked the best for me. Um, for those of you who are kind of veteran indoor gardeners, this might not be a, a lot of new information for you, but I'm going to try to kind of go into some of the details of the different types of light, color temperatures, wattages, lumens, and lux. So kind of explain those terms and talk a little bit about how they affect different things and also talk about what types of different light bulbs you can use. Um, now, I started off just using CFL bulbs. Uh, I used a 6500 Kelvin and 2700 Kelvin bulbs. And I'll go into a little more detail about those uh, differences and, and why we're using different uh, temperature bulbs or color temperature bulbs. Um, but these CFL bulbs work great. These consume about 23 watts of power a piece and they put out about uh, 1500 lumens, depending on the brand you get, um, between 1300 and 1500 lumens. So these are pretty good, pretty good option. Um, what I've been trying to do recently to try to lower the, the running cost of the system is switch over to some LED bulbs. Um, you can buy a lot of different types of bulbs. Uh, the, this LED bulb here is, I think, a green leaf company. I got this on Amazon. This was about $12 for one of these bulbs. Um, and then there's also these, these corn cob style bulbs. Um, they consist of just a bunch of small LEDs. And this is also, uh, I can't remember the company here, the, some Chinese company, I'm sure. Um, these I've been experimenting with for a couple months now, and uh, they've been working out pretty well so far. So um, I'm going to take you in closer to one of my grow lights here and just kind of show you the different bulbs. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences in color temperatures and power consumption. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, color temperature to start with. So you're looking at the inside of one of my grow lights here, and I've got two different styles or two different types of bulbs in here. I've got a CFL bulb, which you can see is more yellow or, or orangey. And then you've got the LED type bulb in here, which is uh, more blue or white uh, light color. So color temperature is important when you're, especially when you're trying to grow indoor plants, um, because they react differently to different types of light. Um, if you go outside on a hot summer day and the sky is, is clear and blue, you're, you're getting a very blue uh, spectrum of light, which is closer to the 6500 to 7000 Kelvin light temperature. Um, plants will react to that with, with you know, strong vegetative growth, green leafy growth and things like that. And so that's what I'm trying to mimic here with these 6500 Kelvin LED bulbs, the whiter light. Um, generally you can, you can put the majority of your lights in your light fixtures, you want them to be the 6500 Kelvin or that whiter or bluer type light. Um, the other hand here, I've got these CFL lights that are actually at 2700 Kelvin. So the lower the Kelvin, um, the, the color temperature of the bulb, the closer it gets towards the red spectrum. So these ones look a little yellow or orangish. Um, these are what your normal household lights mostly are. Um, they're considered a warm light, if you see that on the package. Um, these bulbs here are, I have them in, in this particular grow bed to um, induce a little bit of flowering in the plant. So, plants are said to respond in, with this type of light to flower more often. Um, you don't have to put that color temperature bulb in there. You can use all of the 6500 Kelvin and you'll still get some flowering. Um, but again, I've had a little better success putting some of the uh, 2700 Kelvin bulbs in there as well when I want the plants to flower. So um, that's the what I have in here for color temperature. You don't really want to go in between. So if you find a 3500 Kelvin light or a 5000 Kelvin light, there's lots of those out there and they're generally cheaper. So you might be enticed to, to buy those temperature, those color temperature bulbs. I wouldn't recommend it because the plants, the way that the, the uh, they absorb and use the energy from the sun, they actually don't efficiently absorb anything in between about 3000 and 5500 Kelvin. So you want to go below 3000 Kelvin or above 5500 Kelvin. That's where you want to be in that light spectrum to, for the plants to absorb the energy most efficiently. So now I'll talk a little bit about um, the wattage of lights and how much energy or power, light power, they are putting out and what the differences are there. Okay, so we'll cover a couple of the specifications that you're looking at on these bulbs when you're looking to purchase them for indoor growing. Um, so first of all, you've got a few different numbers here, so we'll, we'll start with the wattage. Um, this is a bulb that consumes 23 watts of power. 
Um, again, I, this has nothing to do with how much light this, this bulb puts out. It has nothing to do with how powerful the bulb is or anything like that. We're very used to that with the old incandescent bulbs because they, they, they were measured in wattage. Um, but that's not an accurate measurement. That's, that's only how much power they consume. Uh, so 23 watts is how much power this bulb consumes and it produces 1,450 lumens, 1,450 lumens. So this is a good uh, you know, power as far as uh, light bulbs go for indoor growth. Um, you can get more powerful bulbs than this, but the cost goes up quite a bit. So it's, this is, seems to be the most cost effective um, range to be in. Um, so again, these are 23 watts of power consumption. That's how much power they're using and producing 1,450 lumens of light energy. That's how much light power we're putting out. 6,500 Kelvin here is the light temperature like we talked about earlier. This is more towards that blue or daylight color temperature, which is great for our vegetative growth um, for our indoor plants. So moving over to our LED light that we have here. Um, again, this is some off-brand Chinese company, and I hate to buy a Chinese product, but uh, Unfortunately, I, I just couldn't find anything within reason for a good LED light, uh, 6500 Kelvin light, and I'm still looking for a, another manufacturer, but haven't found one yet. So um, this LED light here is one of the corn cob styles, like I mentioned earlier, 6500 Kelvin, or it's a 6000 to 6500 Kelvin light. Uh, this one here is only consumes 13 watts of electricity, and it puts out about 1300 lumens. So it's a little less powerful than the CFL we just looked at, but it consumes almost half as much power. So it's very, very energy efficient. And so that's why LEDs obviously are the, really the best choice. Even though they cost a little more, this is gonna last a lot longer and uh, could save you a lot of money. So that's why I'm trying to switch over to these. So again, about 1300 lumens on this LED light, but we're only consuming 13 watts of power and we're still in the 6,000 to 6,500 Kelvin range. Now, most of the regular CFL bulbs, you know, this is an older one here. Uh, this is a 14 watt bulb, but this only puts out, uh, I think it's somewhere in the range of eight, 800 Kelvin, or sorry, 800 lumens or something like that, it's much less. So this is like your standard uh, um, CFL bulb that you'd use in your home. Uh, this is a 5,500 Kelvin. I was actually trying some of these before, but again, like I mentioned, uh, the 5500 Kelvin really doesn't, the plants don't efficiently use this type, this uh, light temperature, so I'm not using these, these bulbs anymore. So that's just kind of a quick rundown on the wattage and lumens power of some of these bulbs. Now I'm going to show you a, a kind of a neat way to measure the power of your grow lights and uh, using some apps uh, on your phone. Okay, so what you're looking at here is an app that I have installed on my Android phone. This app is called RGB Light Sensor. Um, there's lots of different light sensor apps out there that you can get through, whether it's the Play Store or the iTunes Store on an Apple phone. Um, I like this one in particular because it actually breaks down the spectrum of light that you're getting as well as the number or the amount of lux. So um, again, lux is a measurement of the number of lumens that you have per square meter. So it gives you a little bit more accurate uh, measurement of light intensity. Um, you, this is a great for comparative measurements. Uh, I have noticed that f based on you know different apps that you use, the Lux measurements do vary quite a bit. But for, if you use the same app to compare the outside sunlight to your indoor grow lights, you can get an accurate measurement of where you're at. Um, now right here I've got the my phone kind of tilted at an angle a little bit and I've got it about 20 inches away from my grow light and I just have that because of reflections in here so that you guys can see the screen and I've got a pretty low measurement here of about five to six thousand lux um, this is very very low if you take it outside I was getting about 40 to 50 thousand lux just depending on the angle that we're at now if I move the phone up towards our grow lights here uh, I get about the same measurement within about six to eight inches of my grow light so they're very close to the light intensity of the sun. Uh, now, again, put higher power bulbs in your lights, and if you vary the different types of bulbs like we talked about, um, if you put more 2700 Kelvin bulbs in your grow lights, you'll notice your light spectrum, the red spectrum here will, will grow quite a bit um, in intensity. Uh, and in this case, I have all 6500 Kelvin lights in my, in my uh, light fixture, and so I've got mostly the, uh, towards the blue spectrum of light. So, Again, this is just kind of a general um, idea, and you can use this to get a general idea of how intense your grow lights are, maybe how far you should move them away from your plants, 
uh, and how close you know you can have them as well so the more LED lights you use the, the cooler the lights will be and the closer you can actually get the light down towards your plants and the, the higher the light intensity will be so um, different plants will react differently and so you'll have to experiment with that but I just found this to be kind of a neat way to measure the light intensity and also the light spectrum of your indoor grow lights. All right, so hopefully that gave you kind of some information uh, in detail about what types of lights to use if you're just getting into gardening or if you already have something set up like this. Um, these grow lights that I built, these are homemade lights that, that I've been using now for over a year. They've been working awesome. One of the reasons I chose to do these instead of buying a, you know, a T5 light fixture or something like that is because I can't experiment with all different kinds of bulbs. Um, these are a lot cheaper than buying, you know, T5 bulbs or T8 bulbs and put those in a fixture. You've got a lot more versatility here and you can pick these up just about anywhere. So that's one of the things I really like about these light fixtures. I'll put some links at the end to some other related videos, how to build these lights and some other videos I did about lighting. Um, but hopefully this answers some of the, the, the questions that a lot of people have. I know that I had when I first started, you know, how to, what kind of lights can you use? You know, will the plants grow the same as they will outside? How much power do you need? How much is it going to cost to run the system? How, how big of a uh, lumen bulb do I need? And all that kind of good stuff. So hopefully that answers some questions. And also gave you some ideas on what types of bulbs to use. Um, please throw comments and questions down in the description. I'd love to hear what kind of bulbs you're using. Uh, you know, get that app and download it and check your lights out and compare and see what you get. Uh, you know, throw that stuff in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. Also, you can check us out on Facebook and at our, on our blog at simplesmurderliving.com. You can uh, check us out on Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram. Uh, we always have different information we put out almost daily there. So I'd uh, appreciate you guys to check those things out. And again, links will be in the description for that. Um, please hit thumbs up on the video. I always appreciate it. It makes a big difference for me. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.